What's going on guys, I'm Buddy Absol, call me Brock, and welcome to another playthrough challenge video. This time, I'll be seeing if I can beat Pokemon Heart Gold with only Johto Dark type Pokemon, so if a certain Dark type received an evolution in later games, we can't use them. But let's clarify this in the rules. First, we can only use Dark types introduced in Generation 2 in battle. Second, no items can be used in battle, but held items can be, and no reviving fainted Pokemon in the Elite Four. Third, we can use HM Slaves outside of battle. Fourth, I can only have one species of each evolution line on my team. And finally, no glitches. With all that said, let's start the challenge. With the Universal Randomizer, I replace Cyndaquil with Sneasel because it hits hard and it's incredibly fast. We move on to the next route and get this old man's nasty old shoes, and it gives us a Pokedex. We then wipe the floor with our rival and name him Ned for no reason whatsoever. And we make our way to Violet City, and after some Sprout Tower battles, we learn Faint Attack and destroy Faulkner with it. We then place this breakfast food in the PC, and we head south to the Union Cave. We demolish the trainers on the route and in the cave, so we move on to Slowpoke Well. We step over this corpse, and the grunts were a joke. Groton did get a poison with smog, but it doesn't do much after that. By this point, I'm pretty cocky, so I head into the gym and make it to Bugsy at level 20. He leads with Scyther and uses Leer while we hit hard with Faint Attack, but then it gets a crit U-turn and knocks Sleasel out. Great. I decide to battle Ned for some easy levels, and his team gets swept by Faint Attack. I head back to Bugsy at level 23, and I'll Scyther down to Berry Range. Since we outspeed, it uses Quick Attack and gets a crit before fainting. Since he only has Metapod and Kakuna left, Bugsy falls and gives us the Hype Badge. Since Whitney's next, I battle every Pokemon I can find on the way to Goldorod, and then some. We clear out the routes before and after the city, and Sleasel winds up at level 29, 10 levels higher than Whitney's Miltank. We enter the battle with the Crybaby and wreck Clefairy immediately with Faint Attack. We do good damage to the Fat Cow, but Sleasel gets hit with a Tract. Miltank heals itself and after a few turns, Sleasel gets off a Screech and Stomp hits for big damage, but Sleasel can break through a Tract and knock out Miltank on the first attempt. We take the badge from the Crying Child and attack this poor defenseless Sudowoodo. I always feel so bad for this guy. In Ecrutique, we run into this random guy, follow him back to his home, and steal his dog. Now that we've taken this random man's cherished pet, we can grind our way to our next team member. It gets about a dozen haircuts, and we switch trainer for a while. We fight Ned again in the Burn Tower, and even after gaining a free paralysis, Sleasel still beats his entire team single-handedly. After a bit more grinding, Vanta the Eevee evolves into Umbreon at level 17. Next, we let the dogs out and kick out the grunt in the Kimono Theater and get Surf. We take the gym on next, but thanks to Sleasel hitting like a truck and being overleveled, all of Morty's Pokemon get one shot. I train Banta on the way to the next town, until some random Star Wars bounty hunter guy tells us about his weird zoo. Banta gets some more levels in the lighthouse, and Jasmine tells us to go get her meds from Walgreens. We get the medicine and come back, but once we leave the lighthouse, Boba Fett calls us to come check out his weird zoo. We hit that way and do the chores to make us the owner, and gain access to another team member. We ended up finding a Murkrow in the Safari Zone, catch it, then realize that that segment got corrupted. Now that we have a flying type, I feel pretty confident in taking on the fighting gym. Let's try it. Raven's wing attack does big damage to Primeape, but he uses double team and heals the next turn, while we use wing attack again. Primeape then charges focus punch, and Raven misses. Rinse and repeat with Polygrath and the rest of my team. The second go around only has Primeape heal and miss rock slide, so it faints pretty quickly. Raven then gets good damage on Polygrath, but eventually gets taken out. Pyrath then tries to use its Hypnosis Focus Punch strategy, but a Screech and a Crit Shadow Claw shuts that down. Over at the Steel Gym, Vantus Ding knocks out Magnemite with no problem. Then I have Sleasel use Screech to lower Steelix's defense after that. Raven's Nightshade does reliable damage each turn, and Murkrow faints after getting Steelix down to red health. I send out Vanta, Jasmine heals, and Vanta's Dig does a little less than half of Steelix's health. Another Dig and a Shadow Ball later leave Steelix sitting on 1 HP and gets healed again. A little confusion luck and more digging later, and we have the 6th badge. Past Mount Mortar is a Mahogany Town and a free shiny Gyarados. I only care about the red scale, which will come in handy later. Next, we storm the rocket hideout with Lance and kill the innocent Electrode. It's time to battle Price, and with a Screech and Confuse right, he wasn't too hard to take down. Professor Elm then tells the child to go fix the radio, so now we have no choice but to do so. We join Team Rocket for about 5 seconds until Ned blows our cover. We clear out the radio tower, end up in the basement, and Ned tries to battle us again. A fly and a faint attack takes out Golbat, Dig beats Magnemite and Sneasel, and Feraligair faints to Sneasel's faint attack and Shadow Claw. We find the Director in the basement and easily take out the Rocket Executives without breaking a sweat. 
Afterwards, we head back to Mahogany and bang into a bunch of rocks in the ice path. We then find this lady who somehow got frozen to the ice. How? And arrive in Blackthorn City. We get into the gym, question why they allow children in here, and fight Claire. Sizzle can take out Gyarados after taking massive damage and takes the first Dragonair down to half HP with Icy Wind before fainting. Fainta finishes it, but not before getting paralyzed. Kingdra comes out, and we can get incredible luck with Confused Ray and don't even take damage from Kingdra before it faints. The last Dragonair hits us about as much as it hits itself, but goes down to a lucky crit from Faint Attack, and since Claire's a sore loser, we have to do the crap in the Dragon's Den and go fight the Kimono Girls after. Not much happened here, so I'll skip to the part where I killed ho -Oh, and it's Kanto time! I battle all the trainers along the way, and since the victory road is incredibly easy, we can recap the last rival battle. It starts with Sneasel versus Sneasel, but ours is superior, of course. Dig then one-shots Magneton, and Sneasel almost takes out Feraligator, but gets knocked out by Waterfall. Raven takes out Feraligator, but Golbat gets Confused Ray RNG, so Raven faints too. Fanta is last, and it can handle the rest of Ned's team pretty well, so we pull through. With that out of the way, we can finally take on the Pokemon League. By this point, I was pretty cocky in going through the league, but as we saw Bugsy, I can get ahead of myself, so I grind in Victory Road for a bit. I eventually go in, and we take a beating from Will thanks to Bad Confusion and Sleep RNG, but we got through him without anyone fainting. But right after that, we get completely stonewalled by Koga. His Aridos gets taken out with one fly, but thanks to Muck loving Minimize and his crazy bulk, Fortress eating all of our attacks, and Crobat's speed, we get destroyed here multiple times. After multiple more attempts filled with RNG, or me forgetting that Venomous Gust and my champ with no guard can hit Murkrow while flying, I finally get a good run going with my team at level 54. Here's how it went. Will Zatu got one shot by Sneasel, the Executor survived, set up a Reflect, healed, and fainted after two more attacks and gained some damage off. His second Zatu gets off an attack before fainting as well. Slowbro tries to set up with Amnesia, but I just have Sleasel use Screech until Reflect runs out and kill it with Vanta. Jinx is last and just gets one shot by Shadow Ball. Koga's next, and like before, Aridos gets one shot by Fly. After that, Sizzle gets off two screeches while Muck is minimizing and gets one shot by Faint Attack. Crobat's next, and even though it uses Double Team, two Y shards kill it. Fortress stalls for a while before I can land two more screeches and switch to Raven for a Fly one shot. Finally, Venloth gets one shot as well. Bruno time. Him on top gets one shot by Fly, I switch to Vanta for him on Chan. It's a back and forth until Vanta gets too low, so I'm forced to switch to Sleasel. Right into a Fire Punch. The little guy survives and knocks out Himmonchan the next turn with an Ice Shard. Onyx faints to an Ice Shard as well, and I switched to Raven for Hitmonlee, and this stretch gave me a heart attack. The first fly misses, and we take a Hydro Kick to the throat and live on red HP. Our second fly misses as well, but Hitmonlee misses Blaze Kick as well. Our third fly hits, and Raven owes me a Pacemaker. Luckily, I remember that Machamp's moves still hit Murkrow while flying, thanks to No Guard, so I have Raven use Pluck to finish the battle. After those battles, Karen was ironically a relief. Her Umpreon starts with Double Team, but we can land a Screech early and take it out with two Y Shards. Her Houndoom is next and sets up two Nasty Plots, links to Confuse Ray, a super effective dig, and Vanta's insane bulk, we're able to survive and take down the Devil Dog. After that, Cecil one-shots Murkrow and Gengar, and Raven one-shots Vileplume. Finally, we can take on the flying type master, Lance. He leads with Gyarados, and we leave with Confuse Ray. It's a slugfest, but he uses up one of his full restores before another slugfest knocks it out. He sends out one of his illegal Dragonites, and Sleasel's Ice Shard does big damage, and somehow lives in outrage on 6 HP. Another Ice Shard finishes that Dragonite, and out comes Aerodactyl. I send out Vanta to use Confuse Ray, and it even gets off a faint attack before going down. Ice Shard's able to take down the rest of Aerodactyl's health, and we switch Raven to go against Charizard. Raven's faster, so we knock out Charizard with two flies after taking damage from an Air Slash. The second illegal Dragonite comes out and gets one shot by another Ice Shard. His last illegal Dragonite is able to live on a bit of health after another Ice Shard, and knocks out Sleasel with Dragon Rush. I send out Raven, thinking it's over, and Lance heals his Pokemon. A Pain Attack does about a quarter of its health that same turn. I have Raven use Sucker Punch, but Dragonite still has about 25% of its HP, but it misses Dragon Rush. Thanks to that, Another Sucker Punch knocks out Dragonite, making us the champion with only Johto Dark-type Pokemon. But we're not done! In my last Johto challenge, a Fampy Solo run, go check that out by the way, I decided to not go to Red for whatever reason. But this time, we're gonna climb that mountain and kick his frozen- 
I recorded all the gym battles, but the only battle that was even mildly entertaining was the battle against Blue, so that's the only battle I'll cover. If you want me to cover Kendo gyms in later videos, say so in the comments. However, we do have to pick up another teammate before battling the gyms. The first thing I do once I get to Kanto is go to Route 7 during the night, run around for a while, find a Hound Hour, and catch a Hound Hour. We slap the experience share on it and battle every single trainer we can. Eventually, Burris the Hound Hour reaches level 25 and evolves into Hound Doom. When we get to the battle against Blue, our whole team is low level 60s. The battle starts with Burris one shot an Executor with Flamethrower. Cecil gets an Ice Shard off against Rhydon before getting one shot from Megahorn. Fanta gets good luck with Confusion, but thanks to a Full Restore and Megahorn, Fanta faints too. But Burris comes out and can finish the job with Dark Pulse. Raven's out against Machamp and gets a down to yellow health before getting one shot by Stone Edge. Burris is able to come out again and kill it with Flamethrower. Next is Gyarados, and we get a flinch from Dark Pulse. After that, I predict Dragon Dance and use Nasty Plot. Gyarados gets knocked out the next turn, and Arcanine comes out and gets damage from Extreme Speed, lives on red after living a Dark Pulse. I expected another full restore, so we got another free Nasty Plot and one shot Arcanine the next turn. Pidgeot is last, and gets one shot as well. I think this Houndoom just became the strongest member of the team. Now that we have the 8 Kanto Gym Badges, we can head to Mount Silver and find our last team member. Since this Pokemon only shows up about 5% of the time, it might take a while. Huh. Well that was easy. I throw the Master Ball and name the Slavitar Prophet, because showing up on the first encounter was a small miracle. Since we have to get this little guy from level 20 to level 55, I hunt down every rare candy I can and end up with 11. After grinding against the Elite Four with the experience share on Prophet, it evolves into Pupitar and we shove the rare candies down its throat until it becomes Tyranitar. I then grind it even more and get my entire team up to level 69, nice, and give them better moves to deal with the fight against Red. Final boss time, I leave with Prophet while he leads with Pikachu. Pikachu misses Iron Tail before getting knocked out by Earthquake. Also I forgot about animations, my bad. I have Sleasel use Screech against Blaster to lower its defense before it gets one shot by Focus Blast. I send out Raven, worried about Blizzard. Luckily, thanks to Tyranitar's Sanctuary ability, Blizzard isn't 100% accurate. It misses while Raven goes for Fly, and it does big damage. After that, Sucker Punch takes out Blastoise. Lapras is a pain though. Thanks to Confuse Ray, Fanta gets it down to red health before Red busts out the Forest Store, so we gotta do this again until Lapras faints. Snorlax is next, and Fanta takes out half of its health before fainting. Burris is out next, and I use Flamethrower, forgetting that Snorlax has thick fat, and one shots us with Giga Impact. Since it has to recharge, the next turn, Pluck from Raven, and Sandstream damage takes it out. Second to last is Charizard, and it gets one shot by Prophet's Stone Edge. His Venusaur is last, and my Fly does big damage to it, but Sludge Bomb takes out Raven with one hit. Prophet, my only hope, gets put to sleep immediately, and Venusaur heals the next turn. Prophet stays asleep and gets taken out by Giga Drain. That was really close, so I'm going to try that again. I turn on animations and I head back in. The set mix against Pikachu and Blastoise were the exact same as last time, but Lapras can take out Vanta, so I have to resort to using Prophet and his Thunder Fang. It almost knocks out, but Red heals before landing a Brine. It does okay damage before we can knock out Lapras. Raven gets a health against Venusaur before fainting like last time, but Burst can finish it with Flamethrower. Snorlax is after that, and I'm able to get off a Nasty Plot because it would only go for Crunch. But thanks to Red's two more full restores, Burst gets taken out with Snorlax and Yellow Health. With our last Pokemon being Prophet again, I go for an Earthquake to take it out. Charizard's last, and gets a Flare Blitz off before getting one shot by Stone Edge, winning us the challenge. Since the Dark-type is one of my favorite types, it's my favorite type in fact, I was pretty confident I would enjoy this one. The A4 was pretty rocky to get past, but after getting Houndoom, the rest of the game was pretty easy. Early game, Diesel was incredible because it's really fast and hits hard. But since it's also really fragile, and its best ice type move is Ice Shard, it fell behind at the end. I was also hoping I could make use of Scumbreon's strategy with Protect and Toxic, but you can't get Toxic until, well, you get to the Battle Frontier, so I didn't bother. And I bet there are some people who aren't too happy that I used the Pseudo Legendary, but hey, it's a Gen 2 Dark type, so it's fair game. Anyway, I guess the big question is, can you beat Pokemon Heart Gold with only Johto Dark types? And the answer is, yes. Yes, you can. Thank you guys so much for watching this video until the end. I already have the next challenge video planned, and this one was suggested and prepped a while ago. Anyway guys, please like, subscribe, and comment down below a challenge you want to see me attempt in the future. On that note guys, I'm Bloody Absol, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.